Okay, I'm back, and uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, do part two, which is um, of the video, of this video. I'm being really articulate. What is the difference between an empath, a codependent, and a highly sensitive person? Part two. Um, okay, so I chose codependent for part two. And this is a very popular term. Forgive me if you've heard this one before. <laughs> um, but um, it's important to lay the groundwork for these kinds of definitions of terms so people are not confusing one with the other and interlacing one with the other and calling it interchangeable with one and the other because they aren't. Um, and again, to reiterate from part one, you can be all of these three things at the same time, but it, it's not necessary, nor is it something that is true. Uh, they don't have to go together, and they don't have to be one and the same thing. But sometimes the symptoms cause outcomes that are very similar. Okay, so a codependent or codependency or codependent relationships. Um, I'm just taking this off of Wikipedia. I know that's the totally trailer park version of psychology, but I, it's a pretty good definition of the term. And I'll try and interject my own personal experiences with it or observations I've made observing codependent relationships in action and hopefully not get cut off. Um, it's, codependency is a type of dysfunctional helping relationship where one person supports or enables another person's addiction, poor mental health, immaturity, irresponsibility, or underachievement. Among the core characteristics of codependency, the most common theme is an excessive reliance on other people for approval and identity. And there are tons of people who are experts in the field on codependence, codependency. Um, my personal favorite right now is someone by the name of Pia Melody, P-I-A-M as in Mary, O-L-L-O-D-Y. Anyway, just Google her. She's great. And she really does have some good information online right here on the YouTubes. She's got some great lectures. Um, but I should, I should give you some symptoms. This is just a really brief overview so we can get where we're going. And you can do the research yourself if you like. Um, but codependency has been referred to as the disease of the lost self. Codependent relationships are marked by intimacy problems, dependency, control including control and caretaking, denial, dysfunctional communication and boundaries, and high reactivity. And I thought I was really super codependent until I started meeting people who were even more codependent than I was. And I thought, wow, I'm doing really great compared to some of these other people. Or I've sort of healed some of the codependence that I used to have because I was way worse than I am now, way worse. But then I meet people who are true I would say 100% codependence. I wouldn't call them highly sensitive people. I wouldn't call them empaths necessarily. I would call them hardcore codependents. No question in my mind. And what I saw was just, it was really more about boundaries and the lack of, and then an attempt to sort of um, overcompensate for the lack of boundaries by instigating control through emotional manipulation. Not mean manipulation, but see what I do for you. I do all these things for you and you don't love me, but I did this for you. They'll, you know, they do the equivalent of baking you cookies just to keep you with them. Even if they don't like you very much, they don't, their head is cut off from their body in terms of what they know about what they want. And, um, this is not, I'm not trying to say I'm better than other codependents I have met, but if, you're on a scale of wellness, man, made me feel better about myself. <laughs> I 
maybe that's not politically correct of me to say, but there are levels of codependence, Co codependency, codependence. Ugh, that term gets confusing. Um, okay. So, so it is, it is about the lost self. They really don't know who they are. Um, and so, so in terms of highly sensitive persons, like I said, you can be codependent and you can be an HSP, but HSPs are not, they don't have to be codependents. They can just be who they are naturally. And it's not a disease. It's not a disorder. Um, codependency is a disorder. It, it isn't in the DSM manual, and I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a substitute for medical or mental health advice. I'm really not. But uh, uh, codependency is not listed in the DSM. I think it just missed it by... It says something here about how it missed uh, that thing. But there, there's some research, I think, on this where they're trying to... Um, put it as an attachment disorder, I think. So that's something to look into and I'll probably make a video about attachment disorders. But um, maybe this would help to just talk briefly about some of the symptoms as well. Um, commonly cited symptoms of codependency are in intense and unstable interpersonal relationships. An inability to tolerate being alone, accompanied by frantic efforts to avoid being alone. And I, that is something I've never had a problem with. So that's how I know I'm not like 10 out of 10 on the scale of codependency. Um, I don't know about you, but the codependents I know absolutely will do anything because they are addicts. They are addicted to people. And they absolutely need to be surrounded at all times in the worst case scenarios that I've witnessed because codependents just love me. But the thing is, is that they don't really love. So it's kind of an empty thing. So I've had to really sort of put some boundaries up myself about the level of codependents who come into my life. And they've kind of dropped by the wayside the minute I started asking about boundaries and saying, you can't behave this way towards me. You can't just sort of run roughshod over me and tell me that's love. That's not respecting my boundaries. And then they tend to disappear. They tend to disappear. Isn't that interesting? So I also want to make a video about at some point in the future, just not to digress here, but the sinister aspect of codependency, which is really sinister. There's really a downside to codependency and people want to say, oh, well, it's the toxic people in the codependent's life that are the bad people. And the codependents, are, they're not a problem at all. But codependents are enablers, and they promulgate, they create, and they perpetuate the toxic behavior. Because they're being selfish little babies, quite frankly. I know that's going to be really un-PC, but it is. Um... And I include myself in this statement. I'm guilty as charged. I've done this in the past. So don't shoot me, all right? Don't shoot the messenger. But they really are immature on a lot of levels. And they really are like selfish little baby children. You know? And they're at addicted to the people. That's how they get their rush. The people. It's not drugs. It's not alcohol. I mean, they could be codependent and addicted to other substances. But codependence itself is the trait that it exhibits as for symptoms is being addicted to other people and doing anything you can to keep people in your life. And, it, and they really don't care for the most part, um, who is in their life, quite frankly, they aren't very choosy. They tend to get the lowest of the low because it's a way to control them and, um, put them, you know, where they can see them and keep that false love in their place. And I'm going to do, um, I guess there might be four parts here, but I'm going to do some more on codependency and then I'm going to go into empaths for the next video. So I'll see you soon.